I'm Amelia and I'm so excited to share today 10 great ideas for handmade gifts. Hi, so I'm Amelia and this is my channel Sew Amelia where I share lots of ideas about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Today however I'm going to be sharing 10 ideas for handmade gifts. These could be for Christmas, they could be for birthdays, they could be for any time of the year and I hope you'll enjoy watching as I share these ideas with you. So I'm sharing these ideas today as part of the vlogger tour for the wonderful challenge A Gift to November which is being hosted by Alison who's so like Dottie and Adam who's Adam Sews. So the idea behind this challenge is to encourage us to get our gifts that we always want to make for Christmas sewn up before that December rush. So the idea is to try and get these made in November to share them on the 30th of November with the hashtag a gift to November. You'll be in to win some amazing prizes which have been donated very generously for this challenge. So you can make these presents for anybody, yourself, your friends, your family, your pets. The only rule is that it does have to be sewn or there has to be an element of sewing in the gift. So with all that said, let me share my 10 ideas for handmade gifts. So the first idea I have, which I'm super excited to get sewn up, is the Hey June Handmade All Spice Apron. This is a free pattern for a really lovely looking apron. And I'm sure there are lots of people in your lives that could use an apron either for working in the kitchen, or in fact, I thought this would be a great gardening apron as well. You could make the pocket slightly bigger and it would fit all sorts of trowels and gloves and things in there for gardening. So this is a lovely pattern which just goes over the head and the arms go through, it wraps around and it just looks like it has such a beautiful shape. There's a big pocket on the front and the idea that I had was to perhaps put some embroidery on that pocket just to personalise this for the person I'm hoping to give this to. The other thing I like about this pattern is that it can be made out of a metre of fabric and I'm sure we've all got fabrics in our stash that we could do with using up. In my case I've got this beautiful viscose linen that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics so long ago and I've just had a metre of it sitting waiting for the perfect project and I think this might be it. So as with all of the patterns that I mentioned in today's video, I will link everything down in the description box so that you can go and click on the link and take, it will take you directly to the pattern or to the page with the tutorial as I mentioned it in the video. So the second gift idea that I had is one that I have made before and that is a bowl cozy. So I made these last Christmas and they were so quick to come together. I made them out of fat quarters from my So Haley Jane box. Now the only thing you need to be aware of when making these bowl cozies is that they do need to be made out of cotton fabric and cotton thread and cotton wadding because the idea is that you put them in the microwave with your porridge bowl or your soup bowl and then they keep your bowl cozy and your hands from getting burnt, which is Perfect. Now the people I gifted these to have used them and used them and used them and in fact I've used mine so much as well. Not just for porridge and soup but also for ice cream because when you sit on the couch with a bowl of ice cream you don't want your hands to get cold. So I do also use it for that. So the bowl cozies come together really quickly and easily and they're just a lovely little gift to either put in a stocking perhaps or to give to a friend that you know might use it. Now the third gift idea I had for this year is one that I'd quite like to give to my children's teachers and that is a tea towel. Now, I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but look at the fabric. So I found this cotton linen fabric over at Sister Mintaka. Now it's a rifle paper cotton linen. It's in dark blue and also in light blue. And I just thought a pair of tea towels like that would be gorgeous. And what I also saw on Pinterest was using a tea towel to wrap up a bottle of wine. So what I might do as a gift this year for my children's teachers is to make them a tea towel and wrap a nice bottle of wine in the tea towel so they can not only drink a nice bottle of wine but also really enjoy using the tea towel that it's wrapped in. Now that's quite an easy project but I have linked a tutorial below where it gave just really helpful ideas about the dimensions of the tea towel and also how to finish off the corners so they're mitered beautifully for that lovely finish. Now the fourth idea I'm going to share is another one that I've gifted to my children's teachers in the past and that is a makeup bag. Now this is a tutorial written by Tamlin who is sewn on the tine for So Haley Jane and I'll link that again below. So here is one of the bags that I had left over and what I put in it when I gave it to my children's teachers was a couple of bath bombs which I just thought was a nice idea. Now I've used these around the house for all sorts of things not just makeup we store technological gear in it for my children and for myself. We do put toiletries in here, we've put pencils and pens in here to use it as a pencil case. They're so versatile and I lined this one with such a cute pineapple fabric so you can use up lots of fat quarters that are in your stash or scraps of fabric. It's such a lovely tutorial to follow 
and it comes together super super quickly. I think I batch sewed about 9 or 10 of these in a couple of hours. So that's idea number four, a makeup bag, and it's another free pattern. Now, keeping with the kitchen theme that I seem to have started with the tea towels, I thought another great gift would be an oven glove. Now, this is another free tutorial from Tamlin who is sewn on the tie, and you can find this over on the So Haley Jane blog. And I've chosen three of the fat quarters that I got from a So Haley Jane box, which have got macaron and coffee pots and things. I think they would be so cute in somebody's kitchen. And again, this is a great project for scrap fabrics because you could piece together different fabrics to make it. You could use fat quarters that are in your stash, leftover scrap fabric. And I know at the moment we're all trying to use lots of things that we already have in our stash. I just think the oven glove would make such a lovely little stocking filler or a gift for a mother or a mother-in-law that might need one of these in their kitchen. And the tutorials that Tamlin writes for Hayley Jane are so well put together, they're so easy to follow and guide you through step by step and then you always end up with something that looks beautiful to gift. The only thing you need to bear in mind with this project is that you do need to use a special wadding that is heat resistant and there's a link on the blog for the type of wadding that you need and where to buy it, I do believe it's available from First for Fabrics. So do click on the blog link and double check before you start making this as it's much, much better to make sure you use the right wadding so that the person using the oven gloves stays safe. I've got three children and I do like to make handmade gifts for them and encourage them to make handmade gifts for each other. I just think it's so lovely to have a personalized gift made for you. And I also like thinking about what they might really like and enjoy and making that for them to put under the tree. So something that I made for my children a couple of years ago now was hot water bottle covers. Now in the winter, my children use these all the time. When we're sitting on the couch watching a movie, they are cuddling their hot water bottles. When they go to bed, they love to have their hot water bottle in there to keep them nice and toasty warm. Especially over the winter right now, we're all trying to save money. Hot water bottles are such a great thing to have, but they are so hot and I'm always worried about the burn risk. So what I did for my children was I made these hot water bottle covers and these are from a pattern by Twig and Tail. Now there are lots of different animals, there are lots of different sea creatures and they are just so cute. So this is the one I made for my eldest son and this is an owl made up of some scrap fabric I had from making his coat. So this is a boiled wool which really insulates and keeps the hot water bottle nice and warm and keeps him from getting burnt. And then I had these fabrics just left over in my stash of fabrics and I used some bonder web and then I stitched them on. So it came together super quickly and then at the back you've got a little opening so that you can easily fill the hot water bottle and I added a little rosy cheeks label which says made by mummy and for my second son I made a little bear and this one again was made up from scrap fabrics this was a fleece that I used to make a dressing gown for my children and then a wool from a jumper that I had been given by someone who was throwing it away so I repurposed that and I used the edge of the jumper for the, the opening here of the hot water bottle to make sure that it didn't fray I just used a popper to close them so they open and close really really easily and then this one is super cute because it has little poppers for the paws they can open and shut so my son really enjoys playing with the salt water bottle cover as well as obviously using it to keep himself warm so this year I'm hoping to make one for my daughter because she's just got to the age where she's noticing that her brothers have hot water bottles and she does not so again I made her a coat a few years ago in a similar boiled wool but in a pinky colour so I think I will use that for the base of her hot water bottle and I'll definitely be using this pattern again to make a cover. Twig and tail patterns are fantastic. The instructions are great. There's very clear photographs. If you've never done any sort of applique or patchwork before, you don't need to worry. It comes together beautifully. The instructions are fantastic and it just makes the cutest gift for children. The next idea I have is by one of my favourite children's pattern companies and that is Below the Kofi. Now this is a New Zealand pattern company and Sophie has got some beautiful patterns for children over on her website. She also has some great gift ideas over on her website as well so do go and check it out. She has a really cute animal purse that you can make for little girls in your life. But she also has this amazing playhouse which is what I want to share today. Now this playhouse you can again make from scraps of fabric, you can decorate it however you want for really fantastic open-ended play for your children. I think I saw some that had been decorated as little houses, some as circuses, some as firehouses. You could really use it for boys or for girls and decorate it in any way that you like and use any fabric that you like. 
Now on the Below the Corfi website, when you buy the pattern, you can also buy the plastic inserts to use to strengthen the walls of the house, but she also does have suggestions for what you can use and where you can get that. But I just think this would make such a great toy for children, especially when you live in London, and there's not a great deal of room in our houses for gorgeous big dolls' houses. This would make such a cute little doll's house or a playhouse for children and it's a great idea for a gift for fantastic open-ended play. Now my eighth idea is another one for children and this is some doll's clothes. Now I bought a pattern by Wild Marigold Patterns and it included all sorts of dolly clothes from bonnets to dresses and trousers and shirts and nappies. All sorts of things that you can make for your dolls and she has patterns for different sizes of dolls. So if you'd like to make some dolly clothes and you just want a pattern so that you can easily make something, this is where to go. I have found the pattern really easy to use. Again, it's great for scraps and it comes together beautifully. It's so easy, a child could do it. And in fact, this is what my middle child, my five-year-old, as he was then, made for his sister for Christmas. And here's the little dress he made for her dolly. It was just made in some unicorn fabric that we had left over. Now I did help a bit with the sewing, but he did some of the cutting out. He pushed the foot pedal on the machine, so he felt quite accomplished at the end. And he helped to squeeze these poppers on as well, which he loved. So a really lovely pattern. It's finished really beautifully, because obviously children are taking these on and off their dollies all the time so you do want it to be nicely finished so that it lasts for a long time and this has been well used and played with lots it's off the dolly at the moment as you see but on dolly is another one that i made and i made this for her birthday present actually this little dress from a scrap of the liberty i had left over from making her birthday dress and again it just came together so easily and you can personalize them as well i decided to smock this one because I did. And I also put lace on the sleeves just for fun. And she loves this one as well. She puts on Dolly a lot. So that's my other idea for sewing for children. So the pattern is great because it does have this dress, but it does also have trousers, shirts, jumpers, I think. There's, like I said, bonnets and hats, all sorts of different items of clothing. I just happened to have made the dress and my son made the dress because it was a pretty easy straightforward sew. My ninth idea that I've seen on Pinterest and I just think looks so much fun for children is a fabric car play mat. Again, a great stash buster. Use all sorts of different kinds of fabrics to piece this one together and you'll end up with such a great toy. Now the one that I've linked below is one that you can roll up and take with you wherever you go to restaurants or if you're traveling on a train or a plane over Christmas. This would be a fantastic one to take with you and then you can just unroll it and the children can have hopefully some lovely open-ended play with this toy. Now the one I've linked below has slots where you can put the cars in to store them. So again, great for travel. And I just think this would make such a fun gift for children to play with over Christmas. The last gift I'm going to share with you today, gift number 10, is Christmas pajamas. I had to include it, didn't I? I mean, we all sew these for our children. We have a tradition at our house where on St. Nicholas Day, they wake up, they find coins in their shoes, they find a fresh set of Christmas pajamas to wear, and they love it. We like to give it to them early on in December on St. Nicholas Day, because then they get to wear them for the whole of the festive season, and they just adore wearing their Christmas pajamas. Often they get changed to them the minute they get home from school, and with the weather as frightful as it is at the moment, who can blame them? So I've got some pyjamas for Northern Hemisphere people and for Southern Hemisphere people because who doesn't want Christmas pyjamas wherever we are in the world? And these patterns are all free. The first ones I'm going to share with you are from a website called So Simple Home. There's a short sleeve or a long sleeve raglan t-shirt and some long trousers. Now my children prefer pyjama trousers that don't have a cuff and that don't come in at the ankle. They like them to be loose and these are perfect and they were such a quick and easy sew, and they are free. So that's the pattern that I'm going to be using again for their winter pajamas. For summer pajamas, I use two patterns. I use the Bobbins and Buttons Elasticated Waist Shorts, which is a free pattern. Now this is made for woven fabric, but do not fear. I have made it with jersey fabric, and it's fine. My children prefer a loose fit pajama short anyway, and this works beautifully in cotton jersey as well as in a woven fabric. The pattern I use for their t-shirts for their summer pajamas is the DIBY ABBT. Now that is from Do It Better Yourself DIBY Patterns, and it's the Anything But Basic ABB t-shirt. Now this again comes as a short sleeve or a long sleeve t-shirt, and the best bit about this pattern is it comes in a slim fit or in a regular fit, so it really will fit any children, which is great. And again, it's a free pattern. So this is what I use when I make them summer pyjamas, and it's such a lovely little set. My boys wore their summer pyjamas all the way through the summer, 
in this lovely cotton jersey that I bought from Jelly Fabrics. But this year, oh, I'm so excited about their Christmas pajamas. I have bought this fabric from Empress Mills and it's Christmas dinosaurs because dinosaurs and Christmas. I just think that's perfect. So this fabric will be for one of my boys. And then I've got a green fabric, but you can't see the dinosaurs quite as clearly on this one. But I've got a green fabric, which also has the Christmas dinosaurs on. So these will be for my boys. And then for my little girl, I have got this unicorn Christmas fabric. It's got unicorns, it's got little gifts. So not overly Christmassy, but just Christmassy enough that I think she'll really love that. I mean, who wouldn't love unicorn pajamas? I'd love unicorn pajamas, but I don't think there's enough fabric for me as well as for her. So to finish off, I thought I would just quickly share what I'm wearing today. This is a dress that I made last year for Christmas, but I will definitely be wearing it again. I do lots of singing and playing at carol services during the Christmas season. So this one will get lots of wear during the festive season, not just for Christmas. Now I made this from a shimmer viscose that came in my So Hayley Jane box in December last year. And I used the Homer and Howells Ingrid dress pattern. It's one of my favorite patterns to sew up. I absolutely love it. And I'll link it down below. It's such an easy style to wear, but it looks really put together. I love the asymmetrical lines at the waist and there's plenty of room for a hearty Christmas dinner, which is what we all want in a Christmas dress, right? I do love the fabric. It's, a, it's got a lovely subtle shimmer to it. The only thing is, is it does feel a little bit prickly against your skin. So I do need to wear a shift underneath it just so that it's not touching my skin. But let's be honest, in the winter we're layered up anyway with tights and vests and all sorts. So it hasn't been a problem. But if I wear it without a vest, then it is a little bit on the prickly side. That said, I absolutely love this Christmas dress and I can't wait to pull it out again this winter. I also made my headband today, which is just a self-drafted pattern. I just made a tube of cotton fabric that I had left over from another project, ruched it up and then stuck it onto a headband that I already had. So another quick and easy project and it could make a lovely gift too. So that's it from me today. Thank you for sticking around with me right till the end, if you did stay to the end. If you've not yet subscribed, I would so appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be made aware of when I publish future videos. There won't be a video this Saturday because I'm publishing this on Wednesday, but I do hope you'll join me in a week and a half's time on the next Saturday when I'm going to share my next video with you. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed this video and I'm so looking forward to seeing you in my next vlog. I hope you have a lovely week ahead full of lots of happy festive sewing and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye!